Hey! <laughs> Let us show you how to turn this into this. In only 10 steps that will take around 10 minutes of your time. Today, I'm in the shop with Sylvain, my father. He's the one who built our van, but he also built 12 vans now? Yeah. yeah. He's finishing his 12th build. And today he's sharing all the little steps to how to build your van in only 10 minutes. His explanation the, the, will take 10 minutes. The steps are yeah. in 10 minutes. <laughs> if you're planning to build a van, it's gonna give you a clear path of what to expect. If you're not planning to build a van, it's still gonna give you enough information to see if this lifestyle or this kind of project is a project for you. So don't hesitate if you have questions, just drop them in the section below. Keep in mind, this is a recipe. There's probably 10,000 ways of building a van. This is our way and it works. Are you ready to give me your 10 steps to build a van in 10 minutes? No. <laughs> so first step, papa to building your van in 10 minutes, identify your needs. Yep. You get a lot of orders from a lot of people. What have you seen in the last three years that marked you the most? People moment? need to know. You need to know what you want to do with your van. Are you going to be sleeping in it forever? You want a permanent bed, not a permanent bed, that type of thing. That's what you have to decide. What is it going to be used for? Is it going to be used a lot of time or just part time? And then from that, you got to plan every little bit you need in it because it's going to dictate what you're going to build and how you're going to build What's it. What's the most common planning mistakes people tend to do? Adding something at the very last second sometimes is very hard. At the beginning of your van, you're going to be doing things that you will need at the end of your build. So you're going to plan, 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 plan so that by the time you get there, you didn't forget about it when you, when you did your writing on the paper. So. Find a cargo van or the type of van you're looking for. These days, something very special is happening. Uh, big companies, big delivery companies are buying a lot of cargo vans. For example, Amazon bought 25,000 Promasters in 2021, I think. Oh. That means people like us don't have access that easily to those cargo vans anymore. And if you look online, you'll see that the used Promaster is the same price as the new one because the new ones are not accessible anymore. So big market out there. Big market for cargo vans if a cargo van is what you want. Otherwise, you can check out any kind of used car uh, selling platform that you would usually use to buy a normal car. Unfortunately, though, since the van life industry is blowing out of propor proportion these days, finding a van to work with is getting harder and harder. I build a lot of these vans, whether it's Ford Transit, whether it's Sprinter, whether it's Promaster. If you haven't done one before, you can probably fit whatever your needs are in any one of these models. The way you're going to build it is slightly different because the frames in there are slightly different from one van to the other. So mm -hmm. you won't probably see the difference yourself. But uh, for me, I don't build a Promaster the same way I build a Sprinter or a Transit. Uh, Transit. So um, keep that in mind. There's different techniques to use depending on the frame that is in there. Number three of building a van in only 10 minutes. It's a very par paradoxical and it's very weird, but step number three is actually cutting your van. Making holes in it. Making holes in the van. If you read on the internets, uh, you have all the recipes you need to do nice cuts, nice holes. You got to make uh, all the perforation you need to do at the beginning. For yeah. example, in the ceiling, mm -hmm. you have to install this fan before building anything else around Same it. Same thing if you're going to pop pass wires into your roof, mm -hmm. whether it's an antenna because of your of your wee boost, a, uh, an air conditioning or lighting or whatever. You windows. Have to, windows. You have to think about everything that it's going to cut the 
frame of your van before you start building inside because you're not going to have access to it if you don't do that. You did your plan, I want two fans, one fan, I want an antenna, I want whatever. Uh, do the outside stuff first and then switch to the inside after. Case closed. Number four. Numero quatre. You have to say the title after the number. Number four. The rough stuff. So we, when we start building inside, I always start with two things. The flooring, the insulation and the vinyl of the flooring mm -hmm. and the ceiling. So all the prep for the ceiling, the bracketing of the ceiling, the framing of the ceiling and the walls, etc. Why do we start with those things? Uh, personally, I do that because it's easier to deal with installing your cabinets after. You can do your ceiling around your cabinets, but that's a lot of work. Uh, so it's a lot easier to put the ceiling on, and you saw the type of ceiling we're doing, and then to put the cabinets on those ceiling, and it's, it looks a lot better, a lot less trimming to do, and mm -hmm. uh, it gives you the dimensions you're going to have to work with for the rest of your cabinet. Same thing for the floor. The floor is going to be up. You could probably floor around your cabinets, but it wouldn't be insulated. Yeah. That's not a good idea. So if you put the floor on and then put your cabinets after that, now you got a good frame on top, good frame in the bottom, and you know exactly what you're dealing with in terms of size. Before you put the ceiling on, uh, you got to think of your wires. We did the outside wires coming in. You did that in the last step. Where is your electricity going to go? Some people are using the subfloor to do that. Some people are using the ceiling, the ceiling to do that. Uh, and again, you have to go back to your plan. What kind of wires do you need for everything? Planning, planning, planning. We said it. wiring, ceiling, uh, floor and you're ready to go for the rest of it. What are the five essential tools that we should buy when building a van? Basic carpentry, I guess. You would start with a, a good drill that can make holes and can screw screws so first Sorry? a good drill second uh well you need to cut wood obviously so a good sea so do and of course if you get the money you get with a bench saw but <laughs> not, if, not everyone can afford this yeah you use table saws with 10 inch blades for fine finish okay three you know a good sander would help okay a good sander is a must all right number four of the tools you need to build a van you know if you're gonna build your van you, you may use one of these all right or you may want to use a nail gun but, uh, a good nail gun Finishing type, you don't need the big uh, I'm gonna make a deck type nail gun, just a finishing type, and uh, it's gonna help you do a lot of things. And uh, last tool you would recommend for someone building a van? I feel like, uh, well, that's basic, but measuring tapes, we use measuring tapes a lot. I don't know if that yeah, helps. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, and there's many on the market. All right. Well, thank you very much, Father. Good work with the van behind you. Looks exactly like the one I'm in right now. Okay. Bye. Goodbye. Step number five. <laughs> Same. This is where you start your cabinet making process and compared to other bills that you saw online, we do not assemble the cabinets inside the van, never. We do the cabinet making outside uh, because of solidity, because of integrity. And once we put them inside, the whole thing is very solid. How do I know if the cabinets will fit with the space that we have with the walls and everything? Like first few vans we did together, I was like, how do you make sure it fits properly against the walls? Uh, I made myself a big square angle, which is about two feet by three feet. And then you can see where you're gonna, your, your furniture is gonna rest on these main frames. If you want your furniture, obviously to be looking straight and looking, uh, looking great. As we said, we build outside, we put it inside and it's gonna be an exercise of, yeah, I got this ready. I'm gonna put my first furniture in and then I'm gonna confirm the, my first cabinet in and I'm gonna confirm the measurements of my second cabinet based on the first one. Uh, it's pretty neat. It's a pretty neat way to do it because I've seen so many people 
trying to figure out all the angles while making the cabinet. And this is very hard because you have your structure of the cabinet to take care of, but you also have the structure of, of the van to guess all the time, right? So it's cool to have a rock solid cabinet that you can just install when it's done. Step, step number six. Six, six, six. six. And this is six, a step six. that people thought we would do uh, before in the process, but no insulation. And the reason why we insulate only at step number six is because next step is going to be installing the cabinets that we pre-assembled and the cabinets have back walls. What happens when cabinets have back walls? You're supposed to be the one telling the thing. The back walls of the cabinets are going to hold the insulation in place. <laughs> Instead of just Duh. working in an empty cargo van with, you know, insulation falling on your face for a couple of weeks, just wait until the back walls of the cabinets hold all your insulation in place and ta-da! Step seven. Set. It's a Lego thing now. Yeah. Because you have to put every little component together. <coughs> you just did the installation of your cabinet. Now you got water to deal with. You got electricity to deal with. You got gas to deal with in some cases. So now you got to make all this work and put it in at the right place uh, at the right time. So we're talking about integrating your systems. I'll give you very, very co concrete example. Sylvain has to make sure all the wires go from the battery to the according electrical components. Same thing with the propane. He has to make sure all the pipings are linked to the right component to make sure it works. So yeah. this is called the integration slash Lego phase where you have to plug and play all your different little systems. Okay. Step eight, oh, the Joel. trimming, or the accessory trimming, or the accessory cabineting, or the aesthetical or aesthetic structures. The stuff that is not the cabinet, but that is still wood. What is it? Tell me about it. It's your favorite. It's your favorite part of the process. What we call by that is, uh, for example, I use beams to support the upper cabinets. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of decorating function. But at the same time, they are structural and they support the cabinets uh, on the top. So you can put 50 pounds per cabinet if you want. So they have a role and they come at the very last end. So it's basically all the light structures, not the light structures, but the structures that, are, that aren't, you know, supporting the, cabinets. Or the accessory structures. Accessory structures that you have to work on. And it's very easy to work on those structures once all the other cabinets are installed because you have your final measures right in front of you. So accessory structures. Number eight. Accessory structures. Beams, columns, whatever you're going to put. Uh, trimmings in your van to make it look good because it's going to be a component of looking good. Number nine is the finish. Shing. The finishing. Shing. So everything that is caulking, painting, staining, adding the colors you want, uh, adding the little decorative structures or, I don't know, pieces or handles that you Door would like handles. to. Yeah, everything that, Hooks. that finishes the cabinet. This is usually where many human beings have enough skills to work on their vans. Meaning, you know how to paint a piece of wood, you know how to stain a counter, you do what you first thought of on your van, but it's actually the last step of the process. And when you design your van, when you design your cabinets, you probably had that in mind. I, mm -hmm. Oh, oh when it's nine. done, I'm gonna do this. Oh, that particular wall, I'm gonna end up putting that hook. That's the stuff you probably thought about when you did your drawing. 
looking at pictures in magazines and whatnot. Pinterest. Well, that's where you're doing it now. Where you do the final touches to make it look good. So, uh, because before the finishing phase, pretty much all the vans look the same. They're all a bunch of boxes and wood and, and bed and, and beds and that's it. A sink. The finish makes the van look exactly like you want the van to look like. Yep. Okay, last step. Last step, but not least. Add stripes. Okay, bye. <laughs> no, but a lot of people like, you know, everything's done or almost done. This is usually where you would decorate, you know, buy your, uh, your mats. <laughs> You're not uh, right. You would usually buy your beddings, your sheets. You would buy some decorations for the walls, plants, books, etc. So decoration, we did, a, we did a little clip on van decoration last summer. It's very easy to decorate. You just have to to be very moderate about how you decorate your vans because it gets crowded very fast. It's, it's a 60 square feet interior, so you can't really put some boxes and whatever kind of decoration you have in yeah. mind. At the same time, decorating is very personal. It, all, you, all you want your van to look like is your is totally you. So yeah, last step is decoration. This is where you can have the most fun and it's the way it's it's the only step where nothing is permanent, so you can take it off whenever you want and then you hit the road and you're done. So that was building a van in 10 steps, 10 minutes with Sylvain Fauché. If you have questions about the van building process, um, feel free to ask. Sylvain is building his 12th van right now. You're finishing your 12th van. He's starting the 13th van in a couple of days. He kind, he kind of knows what to do and what not to do when you're starting or thinking of a van project. So if you have questions, I'll be in the comments section with Sylvain for the first few hours of when this video will be online, meaning today, Sunday. Fire away your questions. We'll answer them. We're gonna try. But yeah, go ahead with your questions. We're gonna give it a shot. Peace. Plus le petit enfer à rap pose. Ciao. A French Canadian lesson number 17. Arrête de couper les coins ronds. A stop cutting corners. This expression is very similar in French and in English, but look. Arrête means stop. De couper means cutting. And les coins means corners. But for some very weird reason, in French, we added the round notion. So in French, you use the word rond for round, and we say arrête de couper les coins ronds. Stop cutting the corners. Round. And I think we say that because of our French ancestors. They built everything round, they eat everything round, and they even have round actors. So that's why we have ugly round buildings in Montreal. So, anyways, arrête de couper les coins ronds, stop cutting corners in English. <laughs>